Why can't we clone human beings and why don't we have them yet? Well, we can and we do. Now, I'm not talking about a tricky orphan black style cloning program here. I'm talking about what nature already does, identical twins. Identical twins are nature's human clones and have been used as insights into genetics for nearly 150 years. In fact, one of those twin studies just passed over our heads in the International Space Station. Astronaut Scott Kelly is currently spending an entire year in space to figure out how microgravity and radiation affect the human body in comparison to his twin and fellow astronaut, Mark Kelly. So how does nature make a human clone? Identical twins are, more technically, monozygotic twins, so it's time for a little birds and the bees. When two people love each other very much, just kidding. Monozygotic means one zygote or one fertilized egg. And for whatever reason, we aren't exactly sure it could be random, this zygote eventually splits into two different cell bundles. Each will form its own embryo with the same DNA code. Well, how many identical twins or human clones are there in the world? Well, it varies depending on population, but it could be anywhere from three in a thousand births to 30 in a thousand births. We're not really sure why it happens. But for all their similarities, identical twins aren't as identical as we once thought. For example, take my friends Randy and Jason Sklar here from PBS's new science series, You're Doing It Wrong. They share the exact same genetic code and would be the perfect candidates for a twin study, probably. Well, we actually were part of a twin study yes. uh, years ago. We were like 12, I think. We went to Washington University in St. Louis where we were and they sat me down in one room and sat Jason down in another room and I was supposed to look, look at a look picture at and then telepathically send it to him and he was supposed to draw it. Wait, so it was kind of like a paranormal twin? Yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, it was, it was can, do we have like telekinesis? <laughs> The ability you just said it at the same time. Well, we didn't mean to. All right, so so I'm sitting in this room and I'm staring at a blank page and then a little light comes on yeah. when he's staring at the picture and I'm supposed to know what to draw. Not only did he not draw what I was thinking of, <laughs> I drew not even remote. The shapes weren't even similar. It was so bad that they shut down the entire experiment. I think they lost we, funding. They lost <laughs> funding they lost because funding. of yes. that. Yes. So you guys are fine examples of nature's Thank clones, you. if I do say so myself, but what do you think about creating clones unnaturally? Scientifically. See, that scares us, because we successfully cloned a female sheep. Dolly, Almost 20 sheep. years ago, yeah. Yeah, we successfully cloned from the cell of another sheep. Uh, then we have heard nothing about it. Like, <laughs> yeah. you, like the general public hasn't heard anything about the, it. The silence scares me. That means they've definitely cloned people. Oh yeah, no, they've cloned <laughs> yeah. people. No, it's gotten much worse oh, underground. Yeah. And all, well, you stay underground because I believe that an entire clone city lives underneath the Denver airport. Why is that airport so far away from the city? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's no reason. Must be clone army. That's right. Identical twins like Randy and Jason are scientifically significant because they can serve as their own control group. They can help us tease out some of these big nature versus nurture questions. If genetics remain constant, then any differences between Jason and I can show the power that the environment has, like the different hats we're wearing. If Randy and I are leading very different lives, but we have very similar medical histories, that shows the power that genetics has. Is it has or have? It's half. Well, I'm pretty sure it's has. No, it's half. I think it's half. It's half. Oh, it's oh half. yeah, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's fine, it's fine. In the decades we've been studying identical twins, things have gotten a little bit more complicated. We now know that identical twins aren't identical. During development, mutations arise in the DNA, which means that share 100% of the DNA thing is kind of a generous rounding up, if anything. And like how epigenetics or environmentally triggered changes to genes can transform Bruce Banner into the Hulk, environmental pressures can change and affect identical twins' genomes. This means that a lot of the data that we get from twin studies from the genetic components of sexual orientation to the possible environmental triggers of schizophrenia could be hiding deeper insights or nothing. We are still studying identical twins or human clones to find out where the nature versus nurture line lies or if there even is a line. But genetics has advanced so much in the last few decades that it seems to have finally caught up to what identical twins have been saying for basically ever. What makes us who we really are is more than skin deep. Why? Because science. So a big 
Big thanks this week to Randy and Jason Sklar, the Sklar brothers, who have a new science show on PBS Digital. Why don't you guys tell us a little bit about it? Uh, it's called You're Doing It Wrong. There are a lot of things that we do on a regular basis that I'm sure you will enjoy that uh, basically we're doing it wrong. We're, we're eating wrong. We're pooping wrong. We're storing our food wrong. We're twerking uh, wrong. We're curing what? colds wrong. We're uh, curing hiccups wrong. We're running wrong. We're sleeping wrong. So we are here to tell you basically how we're doing it wrong, what was the history of How do we get to start doing it wrong? And then how can we do it right? Fantastic. Guys, head over to YouTube at PBS Digital and go check it out. It gets my seal of approval. Thank you. Want more science? Head back to Nerdist.com and check out my video on the science of Spider-Man's web shooters. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, hit me up on Twitter at SciFile. Thanks.